everyone this morning. Thank you for joining us as we come together as one in the Lord. For those of you who are, who are joining us virtually, I want to introduce Revival. They are our wonderful worship team and band. We have Alan Allison on guitar. We have Scott Schaefer on drums. He's all laughs back there like I am the man. <laughs> we have Jody Schaefer on keys. We have John Vector on guitar. I'm Mindy Rector, I play B. And this morning we have Lonnie, who's going to be singing a song. And we are all servants of our Lord, and we sing and praise and worship for Him. Yes, yes. So part of our service to the Lord is being able to help others. Um, sometimes that surface surface the service is not, not only praying for them but being able to help someone with a need that they might may have as they work through a difficult season it could be a financial need meals food clothes shoes whatever that need may be the lord blesses us so that we may bless others so if you feel moved to help bless others with an offering of love um we set up a Venmo account. I think we just give the username, right? So the username for the Venmo is um, Revival Ohio. I was like, oh, that could like go between. <laughs> um, I also have a, a, a PayPal thing that I, I uh, started a, a business. So you can also, if you want to send a, a, a blessing of love, it's uh, paypal.me backslash Melinda Bechter. Um, but even the smallest blessings grow into an abundance of blessings. So we thank you for your blessings no matter how, how you go about. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he left Judea and returned to Galilee. He went first to Nazareth, then left there and moved to Capernaum, beside the Sea of Galilee, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali. I hope I'm saying those right. This fulfilled what God said through the prophet Isaiah. In the land of Zebulun and Naphtali, behind the sea, beyond the Jordan River, in Galilee, where so many Gentiles live, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who lived in the land where death casts its shadows, a light has shined. From then on, Jesus began to preach. And Jesus said, Repent of your sins and turn to God. For the kingdom of God, of heaven, is near. Yes. Repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is here. Did you know that in the culture of Jesus, God was sometimes called heaven, and the kingdom was referring to his jurisdiction? So here Jesus is saying to repent and turn to God because the kingdom, which is us, God's creations, of heaven, which is Jesus, our Lord and Savior, is near. Meaning, he is here. He literally has moved right down the street. <laughs> and today, Jesus is here amongst us and in our hearts always. But what does it mean to repent? Because we can look... We can look at, before we look at repentance, we first have to look at forgiveness and reconciliation. Forgiveness literally means to let go. It means letting go, confessing and admitting our sins, but still submitting to the consequences of our actions. 
It means giving up any claim to be compensated for the hurt or the loss that we have suffered. The true basis for forgiveness is unselfish love. Since uh, love, read in Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 through 5. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable, and it depends no record of, of being wrong. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures every circumstance. But what forgiveness does not mean is condoning the offense. It's not just saying sorry. Forgiveness is not, oh, it's okay, kind of thing. And enabling behaviors or saying, oh, that's just how they are. Or excusing wrong actions. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. What sorrow for those who say that evil is good and good is evil. The dark is light and light is dark. That bitter is sweet and sweet is bitter. This is actually condemning those who claim that bad actions are harmless and acceptable. Whether it is our actions or someone else's actions, we are not to condone an offense. Forgiveness does not mean pretending that the offense never happened. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verses 9 and verses 12 through 13. Why did you despise the word of Jehovah by doing what is bad in his eyes? You struck down Uriah and Hittite with the sword. Then you took his wife as, our, as your wife after you killed him by the sword of the Ammonites. Although you acted in secret, I will do this in front of all Israel in broad daylight. David then said to Nathan, I have sinned against Jehovah. Nathan replied to David, Jehovah in turn forgives your sins. You will not die. God forgave King David of some pretty serious sins, but he did not shield David from the consequences of his actions. God made his sins known. The key here is that even though God forgave, he did not shield David of the consequences. He still had to undergo those consequences and the disciplines of his actions. Forgiveness is not allowing others to take advantage of you. Romans chapter 16, verse 17 through 19. I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you might have been taught. Avoid them. For such persons do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites. And by smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the hearts of the naive. For your obedience is known to all, so that I rejoice over you. But I want you to be wise as to what is good and innocent, and to what is evil. Let's say you loan someone money. They waste it, and they can't repay you. And they can't repay what's been promised. You could forgive and give them by not harboring resentment, not rehashing the matter with the person continually, and maybe even canceling the debt altogether. But in addition, you can also choose not to loan them any more money. <laughs> Forgiveness is not pardoning without a valid basis. God does not forgive people who are guilty or of willful, malicious sin and who refuse to acknowledge, who refuse not to acknowledge their mistakes, change their ways, and apologize to those who have hurt them. People who hold such an unrepentance become God's enemies, and he does not require us to forgive those that he has not forgiven. What if you're the victim of a cruel mistreatment by someone who refuses to apologize or even admit they were wrong? Psalms chapter 37, verse 8, we are called to let go of anger and abandon rage. While you are not excusing the sin, 
your love and forgiveness comes from refusing not to be consumed with the anger and trusting that God will bring the person to accounting. Forgiveness is not forgiving every perceived slight. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 9, do not be quick to take offense, for the taking of offense lodges in the bosom of fools. Sometimes rather than pardoning a so-called offender, we may need to admit that we had no valid cause for being offended in the first place. Now we come to reconciliation. Reconciliation has to do with our relationship with God. That there was a breakdown in that relationship. But now there's been a change from that breakdown to one of harmony and fellowship. Romans chapter 5, verse 6 through 11, Paul says that before reconciliation, we were powerless, ungodly sinners, and enemies. We were under God's wrath. But because of change or reconciliation, we became new creations. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 through 19. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Meaning we are reconciled. The relationship with God has changed. We are no longer enemies, ungodly sinners, powerless. Instead, the love of God has poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who he has given to us. So what does it mean to repent? Repentance literally means to change one's mind. The changing of mind and heart results in a change of acts, action. Repentance is not just a means to stop sinning. Stopping the sin in your life is a byproduct of repentance. Jesus came to make the way possible for us to be restored and have salvation. Salvation is not just a ticket to heaven when we die. It is about here and now. Salvation begins a process that is complete when restoration becomes a complete and total reality in our lives. To repent means to change the way that you think about yourself and of others. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 through 14 says, For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. We were not just rescued out of something, but we are brought into something. Coming out of the dark and coming into the light requires a total change in how we think. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Repentance and transformation comes by mind renewal and a radical change in the way you think. Repentance is the transformation from darkness to light, from negative, fear-based thinking to positive, faith-based thinking. It is moving from a lie-based mentality to a truth-based mentality. It is renewing your mind by demolishing the strongholds associated with our lie-based thinking. When we do this, we go from being orphans to being a child of God 
and living our lives as someone who is deeply loved by the Father. Repentance is a decision to turn from sin and change our ways. It is a decision not just to turn to God, but to turn to Him in an absolute, an absolute, complete, and unconditional surrendering to God. His commandments, His word, His love, His ways. It is not enough to simply try to resist evil or empty our lives of sin. For true repentance, we must fill our lives with righteousness and engage in actions that bring God's favor. And we must pray daily for the Lord to give us the spiritual strength. So this week, I want, to be, I want you to begin to repent. I want you to completely surrender to God in every aspect of your lives. And every single thought that runs through your head and every word that comes out of your mouth and every action that you put forth in your life. Repentance is not an occasional thing. Repentance is an everyday thing. Every day we must completely surrender ourselves to God. We must completely forgive and be forgiven. We must completely reconcile our lives with God because it is the relationship that we have with God now that brings us to our salvation now. Because salvation is not when the world ends. It's not when we die. It's salvation of the kingdom of God is now. Right here, right now, every day. Let us pray. Lord, we lay ourselves at your feet and come to you in reconciliation today. And we mercifully ask for your forgiveness of our sins and the sins of others. Forgive us for the times when we did not put your ways first. Lord, we ask for restoration and healing of our bodies, our health, our minds, our hearts, our spirits, and our relationship with you. We ask for protection and spiritual healing for all of your people. We ask that you help those who are grieving find peace and strength through your love and the love of others. It is in humble faith that we lift the following people in prayer today. Johnny Johnson, Alan Allison, jo Scott and Jody Schaefer, John Bechter, May Jordan, Florida and Jonah Kristen, Jeff Weiner, Tremaine Bowman, Alan and Deb McDonald, Adler, Scott Miller, Deanna Harvey, James Hill, Tina Post, Phil Sutton, and we lift up all who call out to you in faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Before we enter into our praise and worship and fully come into the presence of God, I thought it'd be a good time to take communion. So if you're joining us virtually, you can join us in communion as well. If you want to go grab some crackers or bread or even a pretzel or a cookie, some water and cheese, so that you can participate in a beautiful reminder of the Lord's love for us. Communion is a time of remembrance and reflection of the sacrifice God has made for us by sending his only son, Jesus, to die for us in our sins so that we may be resurrected through him in new life. It is a time of reconciliation and forgiveness, a time of grace, a time of thankfulness, 
It is a time to remember that we are nourished by the Lord and he is the one that satisfies us. When the hour had come, he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. Then he said to them, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it amongst yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper saying this cup is my new covenant in my blood which is shed for you let us take this cup in remembrance of the blood that was shed for our sins Chapter 22, verse 14 through 20. I give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. Amen. You want to collect the cups? Okay, because you have to sing. <laughs> so praise and worship is a time when we magnify and honor God. When we praise and worship from our hearts, from deep within our spirits, and it brings us into the presence of God. It allows us to break through. It brings victory. It removes burdens. It allows us to bring our focus to God. Lord, we ask that you bless us as we praise and worship you this morning, that we may feel your deep embrace of your love for us. Lord, your God who goes before you, he will fight for you according to all he did for you in Egypt before your eyes and in the wilderness where you saw how the Lord your God carried you as a man carries his son in all the ways that you went until you came to this place.
If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us all from our unrighteousness.
and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked on the humble estate of his servants. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed, for he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name.
the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end.
we were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life.
But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. in our week, 
Let our words and actions align with your word. Help us to be a blessing to everyone that we encounter in our lives. Bless us with your unfailing love and mercy and uphold us in the palm of your hand. In Jesus' name, we go in love 